Hi, this is Simon Obstall and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today I'd like to show you how to make a very quick and easy video wall. So it's going to look something like this. It's very fast to play back, no rendering required, and there's lots of options for customizing it and making it look pretty cool, I think. So let's take a look. So the way that I'm going to start is I'm going to come to File and Import As and Project and I'm going to navigate to where my video source is and I'm going to import as project. And what this does is it creates a new project with the width and height of my video clip, the frame rate of my video clip and the duration of my video clip. So my video clip is something I've compiled in Final Cut and it's just a bunch of little tests from various different motion projects. So the way that I've compiled it is that every single clip is exactly five seconds long and obviously changes to the next clip every five seconds. So that's the really important thing to prepare your video source so that it has a consistent duration for every single source clip. So as I say, I've made this compilation in Final Cut, but at the end, I will show you how to make this project entirely within motion as well. So then what we're going to do is we're going to make a replicator out of this. So object replicate, and I'm just going to set the scale to something like 10%. So let's just open up the size and have a width of 1440 and a height of 810. And let's maybe just increase the number of columns, seven, eight even rows. Let's go up to eight. And the key thing now is to enter the source frame offset that's going to select a different bit of video for each box. You will remember that I said that each clip was five seconds long. So five seconds at 25 frames a second is 125 frames. And that's what I want for my source frame offset. So 125 frames in there. What I'm also going to do is I need to set my play range. So I'm going to come to 424 on the timeline and I'm going to come to mark and mark play range out. Now, the only thing to understand now is how to get our images arranged the way we want them. So first of all, we're going to switch the origin to upper left, and that's already an improvement. But then we need to switch the build style to either by row or by column. So by row, you'll see we've now got row upon row upon row. It repeats itself here because obviously that's as many clips as I've got and it starts to repeat itself again there. But obviously, you know, if I'd, if I'd actually made a sufficient number of clips to start with, we'd be able to fill each box with a different image. And let's just look at my column to compare. So basically it just builds it downwards per column rather than across by row. So this is the arrangement you want. So the upper left will be the first piece of video. Now I want you to notice that despite the fact that we've got eight by eight, which is 64 boxes, I'm actually getting close to 25 frames a second playback. In actual fact, I am getting 25 frames a second playback. Probably the, the screen recording is slowing it down. So that is quite impressive. I'm going to turn on shuffle order and that randomizes the distribution and we can randomize it within that randomness by clicking on replicate seed. And that again, just jumbles it all up a bit. So the other thing we can obviously do, given this is a replicator, I'm actually gonna to come to 423 on the timeline. And with the replicator selected, I'm going to come to mark, mark out, just so we've only got five seconds worth of this. And, you know, of course, I've spotted that I actually meant 424 because we're at 25 frames a second, but that's my 24 frames a second brain working there. I could even actually ch now change my project duration. We don't actually need it to be this. We could make it five seconds. Probably makes the whole thing a little bit more manageable. Okay, so the thing I wanted to show you is that because it's a replicator, we can use some of these replicator functions. So one of them is that we could actually colorize the boxes. So if I switch to over pattern, you'll see that this color gradient is now affecting the colors of the boxes. So that's quite a handy thing to be able to do. Or you can do pick from color range and that'll mix it up a little bit more. It's going to turn off shuffle order. 
might make it a little bit more obvious how that those colors are being distributed. So the other thing we can do is to come to behaviors and replicator and sequence replicator, and we can apply a sequence replicator behavior to this. So I'm actually going to make the sequence replicator just something like uh, two seconds long. So come to two seconds and mark, mark out. So let's add, for example, opacity, set the sequencing to from and the opacity down to zero, and then they will all fade on like that. Again, I want to point out that because we're by column, they're going downwards like that. But if we went by row, it would go across like that. We could also, you know, have double the number of loops, for example, for a really crazy effect like this. And the end condition could be ping pong. So we go like that. So all the fun that you can have with sequence replicators, you can use with this effect. And obviously it plays back really, really fast. And it's really, really easy to set it up. So the other thing I could point out is that we could actually make a source sequence here in motion. So just to show you how we might do that, I've loaded up four different clips here. I'm just going to come to the timeline editor, come to 424 on the timeline, select them all mark, mark out. And then I just need to move each one so it starts after the other one. I'm going to make sure that I'm actually doing this exactly right. In actual fact, it's probably best to come to move selected in point. So then come to 10 seconds, select the next one, mark, move selected in point, come to 15 seconds, select the next one, come to mark, move selected in point. So now we've got a sequence of these four clips. Let's close down that group, close down the timeline editor. So we can now make a replicator out of those. But the problem is we don't get any of the timing controls. So what we actually need to do is take our group and make a clone of it. And we can use that clone as the source for the replicator. So let's come back to the replicator cell and let's use that clone that we've made as the source. Let's turn off the clone. So now we can set the replicator up in the same way. So for the width and height, 1440 by 810 as before. So again, I'll set my source frame offset here to 125, my scale to 10, and then we'll set the origin to upper left and the build style to by row. And now we've got this result and it works perfectly fine. Again, we need to set our play range to be five seconds long because that's when it starts to loop back to the, the beginning of the video. But otherwise it works perfectly well. So we can actually build our video sequence perfectly well in motion as well. And then it would make it easier to kind of shuffle the order or swap out the video. And of course, we can add other elements into this group as well. I'm just going to turn the group back on again and turn off the replicator group. But if I were to select my rectangle tool, turn on the HUD, let's have outline no fill. And then I'm just going to draw a rectangle like that and just center it up. And then if you turn the replicator back on again, turn off that group, you can see we've added that rectangle to each of the frames. So anything we put into this group will update in the replicator. Very handy. So a very quick and easy effect. I hope that was useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.